Me and my mom actually used to watch Tommy Sotomayor. Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> so we was in it deep, right? Whew. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah. I wanna feel Maybe it's more so what we kind of spoke about with um, internalizing your trauma. So maybe for those of us that do know better, you don't really want to do better because you don't really know how to do better. Mm. And I think that more so might be what it is. Like you don't want to give up on, like it's hard when you've only known one thing and then to just kind of like get on the straight and narrow, you know, it's kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I kind of have a testimony to that because I had like a really, really good guy in my life. The Steve. Yeah. <laughs> I had a really, really, really good guy in my life, but because I knew better, I didn't want to do better. And because I wanted to internalize that trauma, I just didn't want to give up on it. I lost him. And he just got married last year. <laughs> Could have been me. So like So I brought this up to you <clears throat> yesterday when we were talking. Do you think Gen Z, more specifically, I would say younger millennials, Gen Z, do you think they actually aspire to long-term monogamous relationships? Do you think marriage is still like something worth striving for? Or do you think it's just the aesthetic of I got my engagement ring, look at this beautiful day that, you know, put us on Bella Nigel's Instagram page, like do you think your generation still wants that? They want the aesthetic. They want mm. the wedding and to, to shit on their... Can, I'm sorry, can I cuss? You can cuss. <laughs> and, to shit, and to shit on their friends and be like, yeah, I got the ring and, you know, the big... The ceremony and the dress, but they don't want the, the longevity. They say they more about that. The, why? They don't want the decades. They don't want the pain. They don't want the forgive your husband for cheating. They don't want the <laughs> they don't want the hardships of it. Um, but they do want love, and so mm -hmm. I think maybe um, they get conflated just in the idea of being a bride and. It just kind of like, for, for myself personally, maybe that's why I'm kind of messing up. Like, I don't want to really speak for everybody. Sure. But I can speak for what I want personally. Um, I never wanted to be married, but that was only because I never saw marriage. Like, I never saw relationships. I didn't, other than, you know, on TV, I never saw it in real life. Um, everybody that I ever knew was a single mother. So... I just kind of like silently accepted the fact that that was probably going to be my life. Um, but then this whole manosphere thing happened <laughs> and you had creators like Kevin Samuels coming out and like he was spitting, like it kind of made sense. Like, hold on. <laughs> we need him, <man>. like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of, we like, you can't be, I, it's like we, we felt like we could just be city girls forever and just be hot girls forever and just use guys forever. But I don't think that's how life is supposed to work. As a matter of fact, I know that's not how life is supposed to work. And I think where a lot of us are with Gen Z, especially myself, um, I think a lot of us just don't know how to get there. Mm. So, like, it's difficult. I don't, I wouldn't even know where to begin or how to be a wife. Like, outside of the, you know, the basics, the bedroom, okay, basic, um, cook and clean, basic. These are basic human skills, but, like, the nurturing part, 
the motherhood part, dear God, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the part that we don't talk enough about. And that's the part that's not so glamorous. And that's the part that we just don't know how to commit to because mm. we didn't see it. You got to be taught that stuff. Like you got to be shown how to communicate with somebody of a different gender. You have to be shown how to cater to somebody's needs and emotions. And, you know, we don't get that. We just get use them for his money mm. and be pretty. And that's what we living up to. Damn. Okay, so talk about how you you know found the manosphere, Kevin Samuels, and what do you think <laughs> that you have learned so far? Everybody found Kevin on that video. That video that with the lady. The yeah, everybody found him from that video. And it was weird because um me and my mom actually used to watch Tommy Sotomayor. Oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> so we was in it deep, right? Whew. That was that was like when it was no rules. Yeah. <laughs> So we kind of already, I already kind of had a little insight on the fact that men had gripes with women that we may not have been really very aware of. But when he came out, he just, I feel like he, he made it more digestible and he made Kevin it, Samuels did? Hmm? Kevin Samuels. I That's feel like he made it more. Yeah. Well, if you were a Tommy watcher, then you. Okay. Kevin yeah. and Tommy is like night and day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think he, he put it in, and it was still entertaining. Like, you could, he still has those videos that can get there, but mm -hmm. his was, if you can handle constructive criticism, if you can handle honesty and the truth, then you can handle Kevin. So, and I was in a place where I just wasn't really happy. And sometimes, um, Again, don't want to speak for women, but sometimes some women, um, we can be in a place where we don't feel happy, but we don't really know why. And that's where I was. And I didn't realize it was correlated to the weight. And it's like, OK. I'm not getting partners because I don't look good. And for the guys that I am getting every now and then. It's not sustainable. Maybe I'm choosing wrong or I don't know how to act. Cause <laughs> the woman that you see before you today is a changed woman. <laughs> Cause when I tell you, I just didn't know how to be like a girlfriend. Like I didn't know how to be a woman. Like I just didn't know how to actually be what a man needed me to be or what a guy sure. needed me to be. And so I think creators like Kevin and even Tommy um, and all the many other Men of Spirit content creators out there, I think they really do, even though the vast majority of women won't say it, I think they really do help kind of like guide us or herd us in the right direction. Mm. Well, Especially for those of us who didn't have those that examples. guidance, yeah. What do you think is the biggest thing you've learned from them? Hmm. Well, the first thing that comes to mind, like, oh, I used to think this, but it, after listening to Kevin, I realized it was this. That sex could get you farther in somebody's life Ooh. than it actually can. Talk about that. Man. Like, it don't matter how good you think that thing is between your legs. First of all, it don't take much for pussy to be good. <laughs> like, you just got two things. Tight and wet, tight and yeah. wet, tight and wet. That's it. <laughs> so, I felt like since I was good in those areas, my attitude, I could say whatever I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I could do whatever I wanted to do. And... What you gonna do about it? But um, I would say that probably, like you have to have those outside qualities, but you also have to work on the inside too. So maybe I'll just sum it up to that. I just learned to do the inner work because I didn't get that. And I didn't have anybody to kind of like push me in that direction. Like I didn't get, your life isn't turning out how you want it to turn out because for lack of a better word, you're a bitch. 
Like mm-hmm. you, you don't know how to, you know, carry yourself in certain situations. And I did have an issue with um, like alcohol and drinking in my youth. You're still in your youth. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I mean like in my youth. Like youth. Teen. Gotcha. Yeah. Man, before 21. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like it was so bad sometimes that I would um wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and, and have a screwdriver, like mm. hard liquor, vodka, and orange juice mixed together. 